I'm Joanna Simpson here at Risk Minds International. Joining me now is Saloni Ramakrishna, author and senior director at Oracle. Thank you very much for joining me today. And just tell me how you see the regulatory reporting evolving and why. Uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting phase in the entire evolution of regulatory reporting, as we see. Uh, the two distinct trends. The first trend being that of it becoming ex extremely data-centric. So the first example could be Anacredit, the next is BIRD, and next is the European reporting framework, and so on and so forth. And it's not just about Europe. I think globally that's how they're going, um, Fed 2052, and so on and so forth. Regulatory reporting, trend one, data centric. And when I say data, I mean really raw data, you know, the, the detailed data. The second one, and equally interesting, is the intertwining of the outputs of one regulation into another reporting. And that's beautiful because that's when the regulatory coherence, as I like to call it, comes up. Um, example here is the IFRS 9 outputs, which are due in January 2018 they're going into the FINREP reporting which should happen in March 2018. Mm -hmm. So there is a work that bankers are doing in IFRS 9 which gives out a set of information which then feeds into the next set of regulatory reporting. So the coherence in terms of regulatory mm -hmm. uh, coherence as well as the data detail, two things, that I, two trends as I see them. Why? It's a more simple question. Uh, and a simple answer, but more complex to achieve, <laughs> is that the requirement of harmonization and standardization across different uh, countries and different banks. The problem today is how does one look at the information and ca compare apples to apples? So the idea of data-centric reporting is purely harmonization and standardization, and ECB has gone on record on that, and Anacredit in many ways is uh, a pilot in that space. And do you see thematic reviews as, and fire drills as a trend in regulatory follow-up of critical regulations? Uh, yesterday, in the uh, response sessions of uh, regulation and risk, there was a very interesting comment one of the supervisors had made. He said, a regulation is a rule or a guidance or a principle, but how it gets executed is supervision, right? So if you look at this aspect of how does a supervisor ensure that execution is happening? Critical regulations like say BCBS 239 or IFRS 9, thematic reviews are the way to go, right? I mean, that's the regulation itself is so huge and the ability to look at that in a detailed manner without investing too much of, you know, uh, energy in terms of bits and pieces. Um, they've come up with three or four instruments one of them is a self-assessment questionnaires. And I was just talking to a banker of a tier one bank who was saying these are extremely exhaustive. The second is what I really like, which is the fire drills, which essentially means that can banks turn around critical information in a short period of time, say 48 hours. This was what was done for BCBS 239 recently. And the third one, of course, is to look at the lineage and the consistency and sanctity of the data that is being given. So do I see that as a trend? Yes, at least for the important uh, regulations, I do see it as a trend. And you'll be speaking on the blueprint of analytical enterprises. What would the three top characteristics be? Uh, first, to understand what's an analytical enterprise, because there's a whole host of semantics issue here. When I say an uh, analytical enterprise, or generally the way it is understood, it's an enterprise that makes its business decisions based on data based on information, based on something it can rely on and show, right? So, and, uh, and that automatically subsumes a few things. So if I were to list the top three, the first I would say data coherence. Uh, and in many ways it's related to what I said in the first and how regulators are doing the second, which is that's a regulatory coherence. Can we look at data coherence? Meaning, can we look at commonality across the different regulatory requirements and reuse what is common. Cleanliness of the data, reconciled data, all of that also is exceptionally critical. So the first step, the most critical I would think is data coherence. The second aspect is really a unified platform that enables things like the thematic reviews to happen, not just for regulators but for the banks themselves so they know their process and how it happens. And the third, to me as a banker though, 
I represent Oracle, I come from the banking industry, I represent them, is that whole job of remembering that we are bankers and we are in the business of business. So is there a possibility of cross-functional information flow such that uh, decisions can be done uh, in order to be leaders in the market, in order to make, uh, uh, you know, uh, with a clear understanding of both the left hand and the right hand, if you will. So, you know, what does the customer do versus what does the risk happen, what is the finance and so on and so forth. So I think those three, data coherence, a unified platform, and thirdly, uh, ability to do a cross-functional analysis. I would look at those are the top three, uh, which, which will help you both from the business perspective and the compliance perspective. So Loni Ramakrishna, thank you very much for your time. And thank you for your time too.